Hey, good morning. Let's get right to the breaking news and a fresh and intriguing clue in the search for Malaysia Flight 370. Here's the moment. Malaysian officials holding a news conference shortly before we come on the air. And that's when they get an email saying that a Chinese satellite has spotted a large object in the southern quarter sort search area. This is the new satellite image. Ships are now speeding to the area to investigate. All right, so the question now is, as the search enters its third week, is this the break? that everybody's been hoping and waiting for. ABC's David Wright has the latest now from Perth, Australia. David, good morning. Good morning, Dan. This is very much a developing story right now. That bombshell dropped moments ago at the regular briefing by Malaysian authorities. It's not clear yet whether it's a solid lead or more false hope. What we can say is that by the end of the day today, they have searched an area bigger than the state of California and found nothing. But now there's a new place to look. The acting Malaysian transport minister was handed the news as he was briefing reporters. The news that I just received is that uh, the Chinese ambassador uh, received satellite image of floating objects in the southern corridor and they will be sending ships to verify. I wouldn't know. This is all I have. A grainy image of a floating object 73 feet long and 42 feet wide spotted by a Chinese satellite. Today, the eyes in the sky included four military search planes plus two private jets. Down on the water, a Chinese icebreaker joined in the search. And tomorrow, China and Japan will dispatch three additional search planes. Tenuous, though it inevitably is, this is nevertheless the first credible evidence of anything that has uh, happened to uh, flight MH370. But so far, despite five days scouring a huge swath of open sea, no debris found. The searchers have their eyes and instruments focused on the surface, watching for anything that floats. A debris field, the best clue where to find any larger wreckage below. Choppy waves and poor visibility are the least of their challenges. Even if the searchers do find the missing plane, it'll be a challenge to recover the cockpit recorders that may finally answer this riddle. Right now, it is truly a race against the clock. The batteries on those black boxes running out, a tropical storm headed into the search area. The focus now is going to intensely be on those Chinese satellite images. Are they a solid lead? We'll keep you posted. Diana? A potentially huge development. David, our thanks to you. Yeah, thank you, David. So let's bring in ABC News aviation consultant and former commercial pilot John Nance, who joins us from Seattle. John, good morning. Let's talk about this uh, Chinese satellite imagery. To you, does this seem like a promising lead? Well, it's just as promising as the previous one, if we can get there in time. We don't know when these pictures were taken, Dan, and that was one of the things before. It was three days between the time that picture was taken and the time anybody started a search. This is about the right size for, for instance, a wing or another portion of the airplane. So it is intriguing, and it has some promise if they can get there in time before it either sinks or drifts away. So we're looking at the image right now. In fact, we just found out right before we came on the air that the image is four days old. Uh, given that information, given the size of the search area and the chop of the seas there. Uh, how optimistic should you should we be about finding this? I think we, we need some luck. We need a lot of luck on this because it, the time is running out uh, on the beepers or the uh, pingers rather and, uh, and this is a huge area of ocean. This is one of the things that I think we don't really completely understand uh, worldwide. How big this planet really is and how how poor relatively to what we think we have in terms of capability for sensors, how, how poor that capability really is. We can't see everything all the time. And, and give us a sense, if you will, of how difficult an area this particular area is to search. Well, this area is very challenging. First of all, it's one of the most remote oceans on the planet. Uh, secondly, there's a lot of stormy activity, especially this time of year. Christmas Island is getting walloped right now by a typhoon that's a little bit to the north of the search area. Uh, and you've got uh, normally very high waves, sometimes as high as 40 and 50 feet. That can scatter wreckage pretty fast. And let me ask John, John one last question here. That we keep getting these satellite images days after the governments take them. This one count came four days afterward. Do you, have, do you have a sense yeah. of what's going on here? Why, do, why are they waiting so long? Not waiting. They're, they're processing a, just a gigantic amount of uh, information and a tremendous number of pictures. These satellites are taking thousands of shots. And to go over every one of them and find something in there, they're using algorithms as well as people. But when they find them, sometimes it is two or three days in.
So that's useful perspective to have, absolutely, given the frustration. Like so a many needle in a haystack, yeah. Absolutely. John Nance, thank you very much. We it's really worse. appreciate it. Meantime, Thanks. relatives of the passengers on board the missing Malaysian Airlines flight have been living a two-week agony with their hopes raised and dashed at every turn as they wait for word on what happened to their loved ones. ABC's Bob Woodruff has been speaking with them in Kuala Lumpur. Bob. Good morning, Biana. Yeah, this news certainly is going to have an impact on the family members. They've gone through this so many times before. Last week, the Chinese satellite thought that it identified some debris. Turns out that was not true. The Prime Minister of Australia said there was another one discovered. They have not found that either. So the families really don't want to react much to this until something real has been found. With the search now concentrating on possible debris, Sarah Bajak is praying that her boyfriend, Philip Wood, landed safely although that hope is fading. I'm cautiously pessimistic about this. I, I don't want it to be parts of the plane because I've been holding out that, that the passengers are still alive. Patrick Gomez is the chief steward on Flight 370. His four children, his two-year-old grandson, Raphael, and his wife, Jackie, have kept a candle burning in his bedroom so even his soul could find its way home. If it's in the ocean, it brings us closure. But at the back of our mind, we hope that it's, you know, they say it's a hijacking and all that. It's somewhere. Then there's hope that he's still alive and he'll come back to us. But if it's in the ocean, it's final, you know. He comes back in a different way, which is not what we want. What does Raphael know about all of this? He doesn't know. He has no he, idea this is he, happening. His grandpa is working. Yeah. Yes. There is also anger bubbling among the families. At the news conference this week, a protest from this Chinese mom, and then dragged away into a separate room. The Gomez family is stunned. It was painful to watch that she, she's so upset. And then, you know, you just, the way they dragged her out from that room, that was bad. At the hotels, there is growing depression, medical and psychological concerns for the families. You had to call in ambulances and stuff. Yeah, places. because elderly people, they're passing out and we need to call in ambulances. My cousin just um, said that, you know, God has plans for all of us. So maybe God has a good plan for him up there. He needed Patrick up there to fly one of his aircraft probably in heaven, you know, um, or cook him a good meal. <laughs> Now, Jackie and her daughters have also told me today that they don't really want to watch this. They are so tired of it. They've been on this up and down roller coaster for all of these weeks. When something is actually physically seen, that's when they'll start paying attention. Dan? That makes complete sense. Yeah, I can't even imagine what those families must be going through. Very difficult.